Hello and welcome again and uh, we're pleased to be joined today by Joe Faraday, our Lynx product manager and we are discussing women in tech. So uh, first of all tell us a little bit how you came to be a part of the telecoms industry. Okay um, so um, it, it just so happened that my local school, my local comprehensive school was an all girls school so there was no concept at school of girls doing some subjects or boys doing other subjects it just was just didn't happen we, we all did maths and we all did physics and that kind of thing and I always enjoyed we had a computer at our school and it, it's a long time ago um, and that was quite unusual um, and in fact I remember um, when we got a new computer the old computer went to the boys school which was next door um, and I remember that thinking at the time thinking hey we, we did better than the boys and I always enjoyed sort of tinkering with the computer and, and that kind of thing so it sort of led me uh, when I came to making choices for A-levels into the maths and the physics and the computing okay. side yeah. of life. When we got when I got to the sixth form, which was a mixed sixth form, um, th they didn't even have a computer, so there was no computer science or anything like that. So when I moved um, out of that environment and into what I was going to do next, which was uni, I did electrical engineering at, at uni. And again, it was because that's just what it was deemed to be the future so the idea of computing um, was still in its infancy really um, so I just sort of headed off down the electrical engineering route um, and the electronic side of things because it was it was the future it was modern and also someone was going to give me a job which was great so I had someone give me a job whilst I was at college so I got paid not massive amounts but I got paid when I was at college and I was doing something that I was quite interested in and it didn't occur to me that that was unusual until I got to college and then suddenly there was no women. Yeah. So so while you were you were doing that study and did you sort of notice any differences about the, the way you were treated at that time? Um, yes, there were, so, so yes, and, and I do think that has changed a lot. We are talking a long, long time ago <laughs> um, and, and things have definitely, definitely changed. So um, I, I don't think that was such an issue nowadays. Okay, um, so that's a bit about your background. So let's take the story forward a bit about how you came to be at Lynx. Okay, um, so, so I moved quite quickly into more like of the communication side of the technology business because I, I was seem to be better about uh, that. Um, and also, one of the other things that happened as well, I moved into the sales side as, as well because um, that paid more money. Mm. And again, if you've got kids, you need to earn quite a lot of money to make it worth your while going to work in the first place because you've got to pay for childcare. Of course, yeah. Um, and also you need a little bit more flexibility than having to go to the same office every day. So, so I, I then had sort of like a technology background, but I'd also got a communications background and also quite a lot of commercial background. And that all ties up quite nicely mm into leading into the product management role, which is the role I do now. So it is looking at the products, and particularly at the moment we're looking at new products in their entirety from, from start to finish. So it's not just about the technology that we use to deliver it, and it's not just about the technical solution, it's about thinking about who you're selling it to, what, what market you're aiming at, um, what are the benefits, how you're gonna position those benefits, and it's also looking so it's a at complete journey, as it were. Yeah. yeah, and it's also looking at the the end, you know, the commercial side of things as well. How much we're we going to charge for it? Are we going to make money? All of those aspects have to be considered. So it's not just about the technology. Hmm. So having the technology background is brilliant and great because it gives me confidence um, it, when it, when we come to dealing with this kind of stuff, um, and it also gives me the confidence to ask stupid questions, which is <laughs> also what you need to do. Yeah. Um, um, but I've also got like a commercial wrap and a communications wrap that goes with it. Right. Okay. What can be done to encourage more uh, women in, actually into this industry? I, I think a lot of it uh, is about confidence um, and realising that you don't have to be the best. So for me, um, again in the early days people would say, oh well we're missing out on a lot of very good women you know if we don't have women. Mm. And then that puts pressure on you to think, oh my god I've got to be the really good woman. Um, and and I don't think you have to be because mm. actually it's okay to be okay. You know, we don't, so, so I would say to women, don't worry um, about proving that you're the best. Just do 
the best that you can. Mm. So that's the first thing I'd say. And the second thing I'd say about the money, <laughs> if you do a job that is more traditionally male orientated, then you are going to get paid more. Mm. And actually that, again, is more important for women because traditionally we do the childcare and if you've got to pay someone to do the childcare, then you've got to earn a lot of money to make it worth your while coming to work. Okay, there's some great insights there. Okay, Joe, thank you very much. <laughs>